gentlemen, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for this devotional. Today we're in Daniel chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 28 through 30. Daniel has just tried to persuade King Nebuchadnezzar to, to make a change of heart. But here's what happens next. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of 12 months. So we're now a year Later, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. So we imagine kind of the scene here. And the king answered and said, Is not this great Babylon, which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty. <laughs> so God has been warning Nebuchadnezzar for about 30 years years. I mean, he's given him a lot of warnings, by the way. The first warning came with the dream of his empire being destroyed. Uh, the next three men were saved by God from the fury of his rage and the fiery furnace. And then last, God gives him a final warning and a dream about his future. Daniel even uh, pleads with him. The message is this, you have done great things, but you are not as great as God. So God warns and waits. That's what he does. He warns and waits. He warns and waits. And then he warns and waits a final time. And you have to agree that God has given him a lot of time. I mean, after the last warning, he gives him another whole year. But again, left to himself, we see his selfishness burrows in too deep, doesn't it? We see in a statement that he's intoxicated with things like his accomplishments and his majesty and his might. His unredeemed mind is forever drunk on himself, and he is resistant to God because in his own mind, he has actually become a God. So here are two applications of this text. First, let's speak to those men who fear God, who work underneath the leadership of someone who doesn't fear God. Now, while in the situation you need to learn to trust God's sovereignty, his provision will guide you through this time. Your job is just simply to trust him and act in faith. Trust and act in faith. And as you do, he will speak through you and rescue you. Just like he spoke through Daniel and rescued Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And your situation might not be the best, by the way. Like Daniel, you might be stripped of your rights, your religious practices, your reproductive organs, and be renamed. <laughs> Yet Daniel found a way to faithfully serve Nebuchadnezzar and his God over these first 30 years. I'm sure it was hard sometimes to understand how to do both, how to serve a king, a belligerent king, and how to serve faithfully his God. But this was his path. And fellas, it, it might be yours too. Second, let, let's speak about those Men who don't fear God, but think they are a God. You know, God is calling men to obedience, and he gives them time to repent. He gives them way more time than we would, more time than we would give an incompetent employee or a belligerent son, per se. And why? Well, because he's far more patient than we are, which is why we're not God. But God's patience does come to an end. And on the other side is destruction, even for the greatest of men, because no man is as mighty as God. And what's about to happen to Nebuchadnezzar is a sobering reality for ungodly, godless men. But catch this. The applications today are remarkably similar for both men. In fact, they're identical. The man who fears God needs to let God be God. And the man who doesn't fear God needs to let God be God. So fellas, let God do his job today and do your best to get on board or meet with imminent destruction. I love you guys. Thanks for listening today. If this has blessed you, share it with someone you know. And with that, I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.